We, what's going on, YouTube? It's Donnie Bialdi. So, I gotta say, man, oh, golly, that thing is fast. It's as fast as any auto open that I have. You snap this thing, and there's no difference in speed from a flipper, an auto open, anything you could do. And it's a freaking lever lock. It's not supposed to be fast. This thing is fast. It's my ADV Tactical Crusher. As you can see, the crusher has been crushing it. I've been using this thing every day. A lot of people will get a, a knife from ADV Tactical and not use it like a regular knife because they're, you know, they cost a little bit of money and they're something to look at. Uh, but I'll tell you what, this knife... This knife, and I'm, I'll, I'll tell you straight out, this knife is so damn good. I have to reshoot my top 10 folders knives video that I did one a while back. And my favorite knife, which is, which is right sitting down here. I'll show you. I'll show you my, oh man, oh man. Okay, so watch this look. Flipper action, right? This thing's the same speed, and this thing's a straight-up flipper, but this is my ADV Tactical, all right? So, same maker. Um, Badlands buoy. Oh, I freaking love this knife. But I did a, I did a, I don't know if it was a top three, top five, top whatever list where, I mean, my favorite knife right here. But, and then I have a, a bunch of others. But since I did that video, I not only did that, but my own knife uh the d-bad pocket warrior made by croco knives this is my own knife design this is my first production folder tell you what if you are a buck 110 fan like a straight up lockback fan you would love this knife and you can still buy them you can buy them. you can go to ebay and you can buy a, just look up d-bad pocket warrior um golly this knife is awesome but with the addition of this one and this one, I can tell you right now that my top 10 has changed. My top 10 has changed. Whew. ADV Tactical. ADV Tactical. Awesome. So, um, I brought you guys this knife. And I talked about um, how I was thinking about doing either a Kydex or a leather um sheath for it some kind of slide that i could wear either on a belt or in a pocket or something like that and i've been carrying this thing every day and i said that my concern would be this which it hasn't yet would be you know has the chance because it's tip up has the chance being a lever lock there's nothing stopping it there's like a right there the detent catches and helps it stay in but I was saying it, it has the ability to accidentally open if if you snap it right. So I thought to myself, um, <laughs> oh, freaking fast, man. Um, I thought to myself, wow, that, that would be terrible if it opened in my pocket and then I reached in and stabbed myself. But here's the deal. If you're a right-handed person, this is set up for a right-handed carry. You put it, you put it, I'll, I'll even show you, inside your pocket right and this is how a uh a, it's got that little roller which is awesome it can't open it can't because your pocket is holding it the cat is destroying everything seeing a bird outside but you cannot look i'm pulling it and it's hear it it's snapping right back there's no way you can open it if it's in your pocket so i even did a little test where i put it in this pocket which is um, the opposite side, obviously. And I did a little run and I did some jumping jacks and it still didn't open. As a lefty, they make it really easy though. You just unscrew the plug, then you unscrew the pocket clip and you reverse both. Now in the left-handed pocket, it can't open. So while I can carry it with a 100% guarantee that it will never open in my pocket, um, I got hung up on this thought of Ooh, I should do a, like some kind of sheath for it. So I went out to my local Michaels and I got some, some wax thread, right? So I want to do a threaded one because I was going to do like Chicago screws or even some rivets and I was looking at them and I'm going, but the threading might look actually kind of cool. 
I got myself some some really nice worn looking leather. I got a pair of cowboy boots that this matches perfectly. Oh, they're out there. I just wore them yesterday. And I got some thick foam. So the foam is going to be nothing more than I'm going to cut it down into uh, probably fours or just fold it into fours and something like that. And I'm going to put the knife in the sheath in between here and then put a weight on it. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. And you not, you sheath guys already know. And here's, here's the deal. Um, straight up, I am not a... Uh, um, oh crap, I just put my hand on the lock. Um, I <laughs> don't hold the lock. Uh, I am not a sheath maker by any stretch of the way, uh, any nothing. I am not a sheath maker. Um, I, I have Elemental Made, guy up in Canada. He made me for my D bad little big man, he made me this sheath, which is freaking amazing. Scabber Choir Boys Outdoors. He just did a video. Um, let's look it up. Let's look it up together in real time. Choir Boys Outdoors. He just dropped a video where he had people um, like a knife making contest. And I have to say, I really wanted to add my um, hog nose into it. But and I got to say, design for design. I've seen the designs on there. This one might have, might have, for a bushcraft knife, this one might have taken the cake, especially in that grip. But, um, I, I brought my forge to my Arizona house and it's out there so I cannot heat treat this until I get out there. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I could go somewhere else and, and heat treat it, but it's the way it is. So I was going to do, to add this one to this competition and I never got a chance to finish it and it takes me forever to finish a knife, but Scab did a video and of course, uh, let's, uh, that is a lot of boxes. Let's, uh, cancel that right there. And okay, he's talking about it right here. I don't know the guy's last name, guy. but uh, let's see. Great job. Listen, Randy Stitch Gear. Randy yeah. Stitch Gear. Randy. I'm not sure, no. but Scab Choir Boys Outdoors made a video called "Let's Make a Knife," and. And uh, five different guys had made a knife and sent it in so he could test and they could see, okay, who did the better knife? But this guy, Randy, and I, I don't know if he's saying stitch gear, like he does Randy stitch gear or if his name sounds like that, but he does a really, really quality sheath. So if you're looking to have a sheath done, who knows, maybe, because uh, I know a few people have asked me, hey, who do you use for sheaths? Um, and my guy up in Canada... Um, it's not his job. So he did this one for me as a favor. And he's even got his little mark on there. Um, and we got a little D-bad on there. But um, he did that for, for me as a favor. So he's not taking on a bunch of orders. And I have to say, hands down, probably the best um, sheath maker that I, that I think, I mean, is going to be Jed Hornbeak. His sheaths forget it his inlays everything jed hornbeak makes the best sheaths i've ever seen he's just the bomb um but he's a knife maker i don't think he he's doing um custom order sheaths you could always ask him go to uh, jedhornbeak.com maybe send him a knife and he'll he'll make one for you um but check with check with scab on on randy so um so me not being a sheath maker i figure this would be a good way to just get one out there my plan is to soak this piece of leather in water probably for about a half hour. I'm going to take this knife and I'm going to wrap it in like saran wrap. Then what I think I'm going to do is I might even just fold it around the whole thing and cut it later. So I'm either going to, going to just place it in and then wrap the leather around the knife, right, with wrapped in saran wrap and then put a weight wrap it inside the foam so what will happen is the foam will compress all the little details in there and then put a weight on it and let it try and form around the knife right and then what i'll do is what i'm thinking is i was going to i, I was thinking first like just like this and and knock some holes in there and of course i have a, a leather making a hole maker um but it's in arizona 
Um, so what I was thinking is just go onto the drill press, boom, boom, drill some holes all the way around the shape and then bada boom, bada bing, do it that way. And then I was thinking, what if I made three holes and folded this guy over one of the holes and that way I could go through and I would have a closed edge like that. And then I started thinking to myself, I don't think I care that much. So I'm just going to leave it an open edge. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it as simple as possible just to make it. So now I just have to figure out to myself um, how to do it. So I, I have a couple options. I could go taco style where I put the spine of the knife against the leather and I go this way. So I only have to cut from, you know, down here, down here and around, and then leave this just like that. Or I can do it centered and sew all the way around. So I have an even stitch going all the way around the whole thing. I'm not sure how I want to do it, but I think for simplicity and so I don't have to drill as many holes into this thing and, and do it. I'm thinking of something like this taco shelling the taco shelling the spine and then just cutting it enough room to do two holes and then cutting it around and I think that's what I'm gonna do so first things first I gotta soak my leather all right well I'll get back to you all right so I have the um, I have the leather soaking and what I did is I used my ADV tactical box butcher to it doesn't just butcher boxes uh, to, to cut this into fours. So what I'm going to do is once I wrap this knife in um, saran wrap, clear plastic wrap, I'm going to put it in the leather sheath folded and I'm going to put it on that side and that side. And then what I need to do is I think just take a couple of two by fours, one on the bottom, one on the top, and then put a weight on it and let it sink in and try to form that leather. It, even if it forms just a little bit, it's good. It'll just make it easier to press down the, um, press down the edges to, uh, to get it to sew. So that's the best part about this foam is once you put a weight on there, whatever is inside is going to compress into the actual foam. And I'll try to show you like, what I'm talking about you see that so I'm I'm hoping that when I do that the leather is going to stay in a shape like that so that's my goal and you can see it it's got all the hardware everything so um so that is what I need to get done and uh, obviously there's gonna be leather around it, so I'm not gonna get such a perfect impression. You're not gonna see hardware and things like that. Like you could even see the little wheel on the, um, on the belt clip, but it's going to be wrapped in leather. So you're gonna have something, you know, this thick in between the, the foam in there. But hopefully you should be able to see at least where this is, where, where this is, and the, the outline here, possibly. Um, especially depending on how long I leave it because I am one of those people that's impatient and I might get tired of waiting and just say, screw it, I'll just do it like this and, uh, and start early, but got to go figure that out right now. All right. So I got some saran wrap here. So what I need to do is wrap the knife up so it doesn't get wet and that's the only reason I'm using the saran wrap is to keep the blade dry because obviously you don't want your blade getting all wet so and I don't, I'm not just wrapping like uh, I'm leaving this part hanging out so I don't need to wrap now you got to wrap the whole thing you got to wrap the whole thing and, and make it as tight as possible because you want every little groove to um to come through cats are breaking stuff all right so this should be good enough to keep my blade from being saturated and that will help gosh i love this damn knife all right so i've had the um 
I've had the leather soaking for a little while now, for about a half hour. So that should be really, really nice and it should hold shape. So I'm hoping and uh, we're going to take it outside and we're going to do that. But first I have to line it up. So I got my wet leather and I think I'm going to, let's see, let's see here. I need enough to where I can make two holes. So it looks like right about there should be enough for me to do that and then what I'll do is I'll trim away any excess. I want to get the stitching as close to the knife as possible but this is how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to taco shell it and that's it. So I got that like that and I think I have enough left over to where I might be able to do a um, do one for my D-bag pocket warrior which I would love to do one of these for that. And so I was pretty excited when I realized that I think I have enough. I think I do. So that is compressed. Now I just got to take it outside and put some weight on it. All right. So as you can see, it's a brick house. Ow. It's my tomato. So I have the knife in the leather. You can see part of the leather sticking out there. Uh, right inside of there. And I have a bunch of weight on it. And I'm hoping it's enough weight to at least form it a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be formed. I could just make a little taco sheath and slide it in. But if it's formed a little bit, it'll hold a little bit better. So now I just wait for it to start to dry a little bit. All right, so it's only been about 20 minutes. I told you I'm impatient. Nowhere near long enough. I should have this sitting in there for like hours probably. But... I don't care. As long as it's formed a little is really, really all I need. So let's see if that did it. Now I did put my hands on top of the bricks and do push-ups. So I'm hoping maybe that little bit of extra natural D-bad weight actually helped. I do have some compressed uh, foam here. So let's take it up here and get a look. Now the leather is still wet and I should have let it sit until it dried completely but of course I didn't so hold on all right so I just want to really press the edges in here take this off of here so let's see if it even did a little I could work it with my hands a bit and just try to try to form it just it barely formed around around the little knobs here I can see them so that means it formed a little but I'm still just gonna work my thumbs into it and uh, see if I can get a little bit now remember if you're gonna make some kind of um, some kind of sheath there's the fat end of the knife the wide end and then there's the narrow end the the thicker end should be the part you're coming up because if I put the put like a kydex especially on this end it's gonna be really hard to take a knife out from the from that end. All right, so I can definitely see some Im some knife impression here. You can see that. That's actually pretty nice. So the inside is going to hold an impression impression um, pretty well. And now it just comes down to uh, the outside. Uh, let's see. I think yeah, I think that's going to be pretty good. So I got that. Now all I have to do is basically cut, and um, I'm going to have to cut down here, and then I'm going to cut around. And I need just enough to make sure I can thread around it, and then I'll cut off that. And hopefully, I can use this piece left over to make a sleeve for my other knife. Which would be great, and if not, I'll just buy another piece of leather, which I don't mind doing for a good project. But I have to say that um, I like the way this is forming. It would have been really nice to um, to not be impatient and let it sit, but that's just not me. I'm not gonna lie to you. So 
I don't know. I think it's going to be pretty good. Got to check it out. All right. So what I'm going to do is I need to roll the knife nice and flat to where it's going to be. And then I don't need to mark so much this part because I already know where it's going to cut. It's right on that edge. Um, I'm going to cut here and then I have to decide where I'm going to, where I'm going to turn it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my thumb and I'm not going to try and change the, the distance. So I need to cut it in right around here and follow myself a line. So get it nice and flat rolled there, 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 there. And then here, I'm gonna cut from there. There's that, and I need to have it low through there. Remember, I wanna leave myself more than I need because I can trim after. If I go too short, well, then I can't trim, I'm just screwed. So I have that there, and I want to cut kinda like that. So there is my cut line. And hopefully that should do it. Hold on, I gotta get some scissors. All right, so I'm gonna use my Shanzu kitchen shears because they're awesome. So let's see here. Let's see here. I should probably put a little tension on the, on the edge of that. Obviously it's gonna cut, but I need tension and trying to do this with one hand is kind of tough. Let's see here, let's see. Now there's different ways to cut it. You can use a cutting wheel for leather. You can use an electric uh, cutting wheel, anything like that. And I actually have one, but sometimes you just like to do things by hand. And this is one of those things. So I'm gonna cut that all the way around there. I wanna make sure I'm still lined up perfect. Close enough to perfect. I'm shifting. I am shifting my knife. There we go. And get where I left off. Man, it's tough. It's tough doing it like this, but it's going to work out. The problem is it just keeps on shifting in my hands. Leather workers, man, I have so much respect for leather workers because you have to be patient. And uh, that's the exact opposite of what I am. I am a patient, like mental, but man, I do not have the patience they have to be so meticulous. It would be, I could even use a pizza cutter. Well, I'll show you what I mean. And let's see, I have one from Mystic Pizza in Mystic, Connecticut, where the movie was filmed. So, I'm just going to roll. I know I'm probably off camera a little bit, but I'm going to roll and make a mark. That way I can take out the knife and not have to hold it. All right, that should be good. So I can at least see the mark that I want to cut now. Should have done that in the beginning. And now I'm just going to cut along that line. are always into everything. What are you doing? Are you doing something that you can't have me in the way? Okay, I'll get in the way. All right, so I got that. And now finish off this cut. And it's not gonna be perfect, but again, I'm going to be grinding it down, so it doesn't matter at all. And that is where I'm left with. So for a belt hold, because I don't want this to be, it's not going to be an in the pocket type thing. Ooh, that left me just enough to put my stitching there. Um, for my belt hold, what I'm thinking of doing is uh, doing, drilling a hole here and a hole here, like belt size, and then cutting a strip in between the two holes, doing two of those 
to melt to make a belt through and uh, that's what I think I'm gonna do for that simple 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 I could have um, punched a couple holes in here and used rivets and then added a um, like an old eye clip but I think I'm just going to go with a straight up through and that's gonna work so I think this is actually gonna be pretty damn decent man I think I think it's gonna be pretty good um, yeah so it's gonna hold just a little bit of form but just enough so I'll be able to take it in and out and it will hold pretty well you can see it it's forming a little bit right and that's all it really needs to do so now what I have to do is make marks and I have to find the very very edge of where this knife is all the way around and figure out where I'm gonna do my do my holes to drill and that's it so and I'm thinking about doing a double because I could do a, a single line stitch 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 that way but if I do a double then I can knot my wax on one side and come through both and then cross all the way through so I think I'm gonna do that so what I'm gonna do here is find the edge of the steel which is right there and then I'm gonna go just past the edge of the steel and I want to make sure that my knife is completely seated exactly where I need it to be so I'm pushing the leather on so now I know and I only have to mark one side because I'm gonna drill through both sides and normally you would do a punch a leather punch but I'm just going to drill it, just going to drill it, and I'm going to drill it so I don't need a needle. I'm going to do the holes a little oversized because it's not going to matter once it's once it's um, done in. So, one there, and now I'm just going to go down and try to go as even as possible. So you can see I'm making little tiny dots. Uh, maybe you can see. Um, and I'm going to do that. All the way down hold on all right so i have a diagram of dots how i want to do it now with uh when you have leather tools what happens is you get this thing it looks like a little rake and you punch and then you punch and then you punch and it gives you an even all the way around piece of what you want i'm not really worried about that because it's for me it's not something i have to sell so i'm not, it doesn't have to be perfect but that should do pretty well so now I just have to drill through both layers exactly even all the way around this thing and uh, then start to go hold on all right so I started doing a double stitching and then I realized I did leave myself just a little bit of room here so I think I'm just gonna do a single a little crooked a little uneven don't care it's all gonna be for me um, so that's gonna be it after that it's just gonna be deciding on the belt loop and so what I'm going to need to do is two bigger holes and I'm going to have to mark them somewhere in here just so I can throw it on but first things first actually no I was going to say I should run some thread in there but if I do that then I won't be able to make the belt loop because it'll go all the way through so the first things first is second thing second I need to drill holes using a bigger bit for my belt loop so hold on all right, so I've got four holes. Now I just got to make a cut going that way, and that part should be done. It'll be good enough to hold on to a belt. Hold on. All right, so for these cuts, I need a uh, razor blade of a knife, so I'm going to use some Jack Wolf knives. I'm going to use the gunslinger here because this thing is crazy sharp. What I want to do first is just score me a line all the way down. That's good. Now I can follow that line all the way through, just like that. Perfect. Score me a line all the way through. Good. And now drive it. Drive it home. And just like that. Whoop, I didn't go all the way through. I, I missed a spot somewhere. Oh, I think that was the spot I missed. All right, so, and just like that, I'm going to have a belt loop. All right, now i got to put it all together. i got to put it all together. 
All right, so this isn't the kind of thing I do, so I'm just gonna try it my way. What I did is I started through the second hole down, and now I'm gonna go backwards, back through the first hole, and then try, and because it's wax, try and just get it through. Let's see if it'll work. Um, luckily I have this little knife that I saved and because it was in disarray and it's got an awl which is a little leather tool which is going to help me get the wax threading through some of these holes um, and I think it's going to work out just fine it's gonna take a little while but so here we go so now I made myself a little loop all right and what I'm thinking is if I can get, let's see, get that, I don't even know what I'm thinking yet. Get that started, and this is going to be the end. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around the top, and I'm going to tie on to that section there. And that's where I'm going to do my do my knot. So I'm going to have one over, and then I'm going to continue to loop through. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to zigzag all the way through. And my threading just went down, but uh, that's what I'm going to do now. I was thinking not doing that because I didn't want to risk breaking it. But once it's tied on there, I think it's going to be fine. I don't think I have to worry about breaking it. So now I just have to put a little knot in there, and then I'll continue. So I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. Oh, it's not recording. I know. I like yeah. to do it though. All right, so I had to leave the house for a little while, and I didn't have the knife in the pouch, so some of the uh, forming didn't stick, but it will form a little more the more I work with my fingers. So that's the knife in there. Obviously, it's not done yet. I still have to trim this, but what I did is I did some stitching all the way around, coming up to here. So now what I'm going to do is from this point, I'm going to bring it to the to the grinder and just grind away some of this leather all the way to pretty close to the um, to the threading and what I did is I ran a glue line down the back of the threading so it'll help keep but um, you can see you know what I mean it's gonna end up looking like that that's gonna ride the belt pretty nicely boom it's gonna be awesome man this is exactly what I wanted and uh, this is just going to be great. So now I'm just going to go down to the grinder and take down some of that stuff. Hold on. All right, so I'm getting to a happy place. And uh, you'll be able to see, I've just been going back and forth. I'd take off, oops, sorry, I'd take off sides at a time, right? I'd go down like this. All the leather guys are going to be like, no, why are you doing that? But it's okay because it works. And I like to do things my way. So this is what I'm doing. I'm bringing it down. The bottom is already pretty good. I just have a little bit more material in here to get down and it should be good. All right, I think I'm at the point where that's all I need to be right there, man. That thing, it's in there really, really snug. Um, I glued up the edges. So I made the edge really nice, really just nice and tight. Nice for me because it is for me so i really don't care how it is still a little sticky i'm not i'm not really um finished letting it dry but i did oil it up clean it up um it looks really really good this knife sits in there so snug so i gotta put it on my belt hold on hold on all right so you can see i can have it under the shirt or i can have the shirt over it it don't matter but bam comes out no problem bam goes in no problem that is a hundred percent secure the the leather the color looks good it's nice and worn matches a lot of my boots but check that out so now i have a leather holster for my blade and i am super super psyched about it um i was trying to see if i could pop it but um it's just it's just awesome, man. It is awesome. So now I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. I got a, uh, I got a belt, a belt sheath now. 
for my crusher and it's crushing it. So I think um, what I'm gonna do now is, uh, I think I'm gonna do one for for the D-Bad Pocket Warrior because that worked out pretty good. This thing, I'm telling you, man, I love this knife, man. I freaking love it. All right, so that's it for this one. That was a success. Everything I needed to get done got done. It works. I like it. It fits. It's just exactly what it needs to be. I wonder, though. I, want, I don't know. I don't know because they're both different size knives, but if I wanted to, I wonder. And I could. Even the D-Bad Pocket Warrior fits in there. So maybe by not uh, leaving it long enough for it to fully form, now it's more universal. But um, that's pretty good. All right, so a uh, couple people want to see that. Not everybody. All right, so that worked. That's it for this one. I am Donnie B. All Day. Until next video, look at this light. looks weird.